In 1981, in the Chicago neighborhood of Little Village, Margarito Flores Sr., a father of five, was convicted of smuggling people into the country. And in an undercover sting in March that year, he was caught selling 11 pounds of heroin to an undercover federal agent in front of the family home. Flores' wife gave birth to twin boys, whom they named Margarito Jr. and Pedro, just a few months later in June. To continue learning the story of Margarito and Pedro Flores, then keep watching until the end of the video. Also, if you're new to the channel, don't forget to like and hit the subscribe button. Now without further ado, let's get started. The elder Flores has been a shadowy figure in his son's story, but sources close to the family indicate that their father's influence may not have given the twins a connection to the Mexican cartels as long rumored, but still helped steer them into a lifetime of crime. Initially, they followed in their father's footsteps, running drugs with the Latin Kings gang, and yet, the brothers' combined characters and unwavering commitment to each other endeared them to a host of unscrupulous characters. The brothers were seen as businessmen, CEOs of the street with the integrity to match. When Pedro was kidnapped in 2003, Margarito paid the full 2 million US dollars ransom immediately, absorbing the cost rather than seeking to strike back. Pedro Flores told people close to him that when he and his brother revealed they had flipped against the cartel and that federal agents wanted to quickly evacuate their family from Mexico, their father became livid, calling them cowards and saying he was ashamed of them. That was the last conversation they would ever have with their dad. Flores Sr. had started crossing the border into the United States in the late 1950s and was stopped nearly 20 times, including once in 1966 when he was charged with smuggling people across the border into the U.S., according to federal documents included in his Cook County court file. Flores Sr. immigrated to the Chicago area in 1969. Seven years later, he managed to secure permanent residency despite the smuggling conviction, according to the court file. Flores' double life began to unravel in late 1980. An informant tipped off federal agents that Flores had been smuggling people into Chicago and was now planning to bring a shipment of heroin into the city. The following March, a sting was set up as Flores drove a car loaded with heroin from El Paso, Texas to Chicago. Flores pleaded guilty to possession of a controlled substance seven months later and was sentenced to 10 years in state prison. At the time, he was bringing an estimated 35 kilos a month into Chicago, Cook County court records indicate. While it was a sizable amount of drugs for the time, it was just a fraction of the operation his sons would one day build, a network that stretched from Chicago to cities across the U.S. and Canada. At their peak, Pedro and Margarito Jr. were trafficking more than 1,500 kilos of cocaine and heroin a month. Authorities say that's more than 40 times the quantity their father moved. The fact that the Flores twins would inherit their father's trade was hardly surprising given what they were exposed to at a young age. When he returned home from prison after eight years, the elder Flores taught his boys tricks they would use and improve on later. The twins were also influenced by older brothers Armando and Hector, who both had picked up drug charges while Pedro and Margarito Jr. were still in grade school. Twice, their house on South Homan would be the target of search warrants. As youths, the twins made trips to Mexico with their father, bouncing over the border in the back of his flatbed truck pretending to sleep on tarps that were hiding drugs. Their father also took advantage of his boy's small hands, a perfect size for tripping hidden trap doors where drugs had been stashed. One source said that Pedro Flores once recalled seeing a television commercial in which a boy held a lamp as his father worked on a car engine. The boy handed up a wrench to his father, watching and learning. The only difference for the Flores boys was that they helped their dad remove gas tanks filled with hundreds of pounds of marijuana. By the time they were in high school, Pedro and Margarito Jr. had launched their own drug enterprise, in part by picking up some of Armando's customers after he went to prison for a federal drug conviction. The twins perfected the business beyond a father's wildest dreams. The close-knit brothers were smart, kept their heads down, and backed each other up. They stayed away from the day-to-day -day violence of Chicago's gang-infested streets, steering mostly clear of the law enforcement as they rose from Little Village to the hills of Sinaloa, where they eventually had sit-downs with some of the most powerful and feared drug kingpins in the world. The twins were plugged directly into Guzman's supply operation that moved tons of narcotics out of South America via 747s, submarines, and speedboats into Mexico before putting the loads on freight trains or semi-trailers for the journey into the U.S. Exactly how the Flores twins were introduced to the Sinaloa cartel is not publicly 
widely known, but records show they made a connection by the late 1990s, when they were still in their late teens. In 2004, in the wake of a federal investigation into their drug trafficking in Milwaukee, the twins moved their operation to Mexico. Once there, they continued to expand their reach, and by 2005, they were meeting personally with El Chapo, who at the time had recently escaped from prison and was the most wanted man in the world. As the money poured in, the twins and their family, their father included, reaped the benefits. Records show that by 2008, they had acquired numerous homes in Mexico. They had a fleet of cars and expensive toys such as water scooters and motorcycles and millions of dollars in cash on hand. But it all began to crash in 2008. Caught between a warring Beltran Leva and Sinaloa cartels, the twin brothers decided it was just too dangerous to stay in Mexico. But a return home was complicated by a still pending indictment in Milwaukee. That forced the brothers to make another strategic move, contacting the US government and offering to give up their impressive connections to Mexico's underworld. The twins' cooperation ultimately led to the conviction of about 40 distributors, dealers, and couriers in Mexico and Chicago, including several high-level street dealers in Chicago. El Chapo himself was charged as well, but he remains in custody in Mexico after his spectacular capture in February 2014. El Chapo had arrived at the defense in what seemed like a good mood. He waved to some onlookers and raised a hand to his head in what appeared to almost be a salute to a pair of senior citizens in the courtroom, and listened as Flores continued to tell jurors that Guzman was the head of the cartel operations that included his own branch that moved many tons of drugs to Chicago on trains and trucks for distribution. Flores described being unable to answer one phone call from Guzman because he was standing with a group of people and didn't want to take his store-bought digital recorder out of his pants pocket to tape the drug kingpin. Two weeks after the calls with his boss, Flores said he had turned himself into the DEA full-time and took himself out of harm's way. He said he was essentially controlling the flow of cartel cocaine and heroin into Chicago and the US from Mexico right up to that point. After working undercover for a month in Mexico, the twins finally told their immediate family that they were cooperating with U.S. law enforcement and that authorities would be moving all of them back to the U.S. for safety reasons. Their father was among the family members granted protection despite his criminal record. In a cross-examination, Guzman's lawyer, William Purpura, raised questions about past statements Flores has made to authorities about who was supplying the drugs especially earlier in his career. The defense has sought to push blame for drug operations onto Guzman's co-defendant in the case, Ismael El Mayo Zambada. He also tried to tie Flores into a significant Chicago gang murder. Latin King boss Rudy Rangel Jr. was gunned down in a little village barber shop in 2003, and Purpura pointed out Flores had previously described Rangel, whom he knew from the neighborhood, as a thief who would rob drug dealers. After Rangel was murdered, his widow went on to marry Flores' brother, Margarito Flores, Purpura noted. Flores testified that he did not order anyone to kill Rangel. Working with U.S. authorities paid off for the twins. Pedro and Margarito Jr., 33, were sentenced to just 14 years each in prison, far less than the life sentences they could have faced. The two have been in prison since late 2008. When they're released, they will remain in the witness protection program with their families and be given new identities and a fresh start. It will, however, be without their father. Despite the danger, the elder Flores decided to make one more journey to Mexico in 2009 to take care of personal business. A few days later, his abandoned car was found in the Sinaloan desert with a note attached to the windshield, warning his sons to keep their mouths shut. He has not been seen or heard from since. When U.S. District Judge Ruben Castillo in 2015 sentenced Pedro and Margarita Flores, heralded as two of the most important drug informants in U.S. history, he made it clear he thought they had drug money stashed away when they got out of prison. At the time, federal prosecutors had discovered no evidence of hidden assets. Pedro Flores testified against Mexican drug kingpin Joaquin El Chapo Guzman Loera during his trial in Brooklyn which led to a life prison term for him. When the Flores brothers were sentenced, the judge told them that even after they do their time and are released into the government's witness protection program, they'll always have to worry about being hunted down by cartel hitmen. Last year, they lost a bit to have their sentences shortened for their continuing cooperation against the Sinaloa cartel. The government has seized more than $4 million from the twins, but their spending while in protective custody continued to raise questions about whether more money was hidden. 
Pedro Flores, for instance, gave his wife a $200,000 Bentley shortly before he went to prison. The feds later seized the car and prosecutors called the gift wholly inappropriate. Don't forget to like this video and share. And just so you don't miss out on new videos, subscribe to this channel and turn on post notifications. Until next time.